What's up everybody? Welcome back to How It's Done. So this morning woke up, found there was a bunch of water in the front yard between my neighbor and I. Um, came and looked at it. There's actually water flowing. You can see pretty well. Um, so we do have a water leak somewhere. Um, it comes all the way back to here. And there's a bunch of tree roots at the ground level you can see from my neighbor so first thing we're gonna to want to do is figure out whether or not this is on our side or the city side and then we'll go from there so today on how it's done we're gonna walk you through that process hopefully make this pretty easy for you to actually at least get some initial questions answered and potentially repair it yourself or know what you're looking at when you hire somebody to come fix it fix this for you Alright, so depending upon where you live, you might have a slightly different setup with your water meter. Um, most of ours here in the south, in Texas, uh, you share a water meter with your neighbor, uh, or a water meter box rather, to where the two meters are in the same box. Um, see if I can get this. You can see, come on, focus up. Uh, you might not be able to see that super well, but the dial on this one is spinning the dial on this one is staying still there's this little triangular uh, dial in here that's spinning pretty good that means there's water flowing and then at a slower rate this big needle is moving on this one it's not so unfortunately um, the leak is after the meter which means it's going to be the homeowner's responsibility um, and of course it's on my side, so it's my responsibility, which I guess is good for my neighbor because I know how to figure this out and fix it. So first thing we're going to want to do is shut off the water here, get this all cleaned out, um, and then go through and assess and see exactly where the water leak is. Uh, I'm going to use my shop vac to get this vacuumed out and I'll give you a little closer view on the meter and what I'm talking about. So I'll be honest, even with a shop vac, this is a very tedious process because you've got a lot of water left over in the yard that's, that's going to drain into your um, shut off here. Um, and then the shop back fills up in about 30 seconds or less. So you have to keep dumping it. It is a tedious process, but you can see here what I'm talking about. This is the one that it's not spinning now because I've got this. Uh, let's see if you can see it. I might have to show you later on um, once this stops draining. But you can see that it's not spinning now. And you can see that this dial is not moving. So the water is turned off the house right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the garage where my main for the house is so this is your city main right here you're gonna have a main inside the house so we're gonna shut that off and then we'll turn the water back on out here and if it continues to spin what that's gonna tell us is that the leak is between here and the first point that is shut off so it's gonna be on the main that feeds the house all right so this is the water main for the house uh, it's typically going to be in a garage or somewhere on an exterior wall um, closest to the street. Sometimes I've seen them in pantries and stuff like that, but it's good to know where your water main is for your house. So we're going to go ahead and shut that off. All right. Now we'll go ahead and turn the meter back on and see if it continues to spin. I'm assuming it will because of the area that the water is coming from. It looks like it's probably coming from the main, but... That's why we're doing this to confirm. All right, so I got it cleared out a little bit better so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And then this right here is actually the valve that you're gonna turn to open it and close it. Um, it's got a little loop on one end. I don't know if you can make it out with all the dirt in there, but that's, if you don't pay your bill, that's where they'll lock it out on you. Um, to open and close this, they do make special tools that you can just stick in there and turn it. I have a, a pretty good pipe wrench, monkey wrench, whatever you want to call it. You can just take the threaded portion out and this slot right here, 
fits right over this super well. And then you can turn it. Oh, bummer. That's not good. All right, well, water's on now. And uh, it's not spinning. So the pipe break or leak or whatever you want to call it is not between the um, main and the meter. Um, so that leaves us with either a pipe inside leaking or a sprinkler line um, or one of the spigots. So, yeah, let's go check those out. Uh, first thing I would recommend doing, walk around the perimeter of the house, look at the foundation, see if you see any wet spots where water might be seeping out of the wall. Obviously, you're hopefully going to notice inside the house if you've got water coming from the ceiling or something. Um, but that's also a possibility. So let's go check that out. Before we turn the water back on, since it's been leaking, we should be able to see a wet spot along the foundation. So since it's on this side of the house, um, didn't really see any wet spots on, along the foundation here. Um, walked completely around the house, but we know it's on this side, so I really didn't need to look at the other side. Um, it hasn't been raining, so it really wouldn't be anything to do with the rain drains. Um, you can see there's, there's just some moisture at the bottom level, nothing super crazy. If it was a pipe leaking in the wall, you'd probably see it coming out of one of these weep holes here. Um, or if it was if it was coming out of a spigot, you would definitely see it coming out of that that little area. I did go ahead and pop this little sprinkler controller valve, and there is some water in here, but it's not a crazy amount. I, I expect that if this was what was leaking, it would have been bubbling over here instead of. Um, just kind of pooling in this area. Um, I did notice that this area right here, where we've got a lot of water sitting, I do have one of those in-ground drains that drains out to the street. So uh, it's potentially just popping up from here because it's feeding through this underground somewhere where there's something broken in the ground. Um, so it could potentially be in the backyard. Backyard doesn't really have any water on it uh, at the ground level, but it's pretty well dry. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not underneath. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shut off the valves for the sprinkler system. And I will turn on the main. And we will see if we still have some water flow, if it's still spinning. If it's not, um, that tells us it's something with the sprinkler system. And at that point, you'll know whether you need just a general plumber or a sprinkler guy. Um, if it was the main, you could go in the yard. Like I said, I, I saw that there was a little bit of flow coming from here. You'll see a spot in the yard where it's moist. You can take a rod and kind of just start shoving it down, um, like a coat hanger or something like that. Where it's soft is going to be where your water uh, is starting to erode away the soil underneath. So that's one way you could do it. A couple other ways, that's the one that's worked best for me uh, in terms of locating where the water is leaking. Most of the time you'll see it start to bubble up. Um, this one's a little bit odd. But, uh, yeah, we're going to address that. So we're going to go ahead and shut off the sprinkler system and turn on the main and see what happens. So we valved off the sprinkler system um, from down here. Went ahead and turned it back on uh, from the water main in the garage and saw water bubbling up from down here around this area. Um, so something underground there broke or came loose or something. Um, and then we saw water kind of flowing down this way a little bit. We do have an in-ground drain right here. So I'm assuming what's happening is the water's just flowing into the drain and then popping out further down there. That's why we have a pretty dry area up in here. So yeah, now we're going to get to, uh, dig this up, remove these pavers and, uh, 
figure out exactly where the brake is, but at least we have it identified. Unfortunately, it is before this isolation valve. Um, so we have to have the water off to the house in order to, uh, until we get this fixed. So it's not like something we can just shut off the sprinkler and have a sprinkler guy come out. If it was on this side, that would be the case. You just shut off the sprinkler line, um, call a guy. Or figure it out yourself. So, yeah, we dug this up, and there actually is a break. Um, let's see if we can see this back here. Probably not, but there's a break right behind the 90. Um, or maybe it's just where the 90 is broken loose or something, but as soon as you turn the water on, it sprays right out the back there. Um, so yeah, we are going to just be replacing that fitting. Shouldn't be super hard. Um, nothing we need to dig a super huge hole for. I've actually dug this a little bit bigger than I need to because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding a valve in ground um, so that we can isolate it in the ground for winter. And I'm also going to be uh, putting a 45 here and kicking it over to this side of the wall because the timing on this was actually very good. Um, I'm going to be adding a fertilizer uh, dosing system to my sprinkler system. So when the sprinkler runs, um, it can fertilize the yard and flower beds as well. So uh, this 90 going out when it did um, was actually, if there is a good time for a pipe to break, um, this was a good time for the pipe to break. So we'll go ahead and remove that and make these modifications with the 45 here do a little isolation valve over here somewhere and uh yeah get that taken care of all right so it is starting to rain a little bit so i'm going to try and get this done uh before this hole gets filled back up full of water so i probably will not record me doing the actual repairs but i will uh record what it looks like afterwards basically uh, obviously your repairs are going to vary depending upon where it is broken from um at the 90 here, you're going to want to just cut off the 90 at the 90. Uh, you can, you're probably going to have to add a cup link in here as well. That'll give it a little bit more space. Um, one trick that you can do most of the time is you can add a little bit of pipe here and then bend it up. And you can have a little bit more to where this piece will seat up in here without messing with your height too much. Um, you may have to get just a little two foot stick of one inch pipe and add a cup link with an additional section to get that length back. You're going to lose about half an inch to three quarters of an inch off the pipe when you make up your connector because of the part that slides into the connector. Um, so yeah, if you do have a 90, unfortunately that's going to be the case. If it's on the straight pipe here, there is a fitting um, that you can buy. It's, you're not going to need to get any other pipe or any other fittings. I'll leave a link to a video that I did a few weeks ago on uh, how to make a repair on that. Um, but for now, we're going to go ahead and cut it out right here at our 45 so that it'll shoot over this way. And we'll add our little in-ground box um, with a valve in the ground so that we can just valve it off for the winter, um, remove these unions, um, and take the whole sprinkler system off. And then in a later video, probably next week, I will show you the dosing system that we're going to do for the sprinkler system so that we can fertilize when the sprinkler runs. So go ahead and get that started before it starts downpouring on me, hopefully, and we'll be back. All right, so went ahead, got that 90 that was busted off removed. Um, got our little cap where this feeds into the sprinkler system in ground. Um, but yes, yeah, so we added a 45 back here, and this has it come this way. This is where our little isolation valve is in the ground, so we'll be able to reach in and turn that. We've got this little, six inch cover, um, six inch sprinkler valve cover that we got from Home Depot Lowe's. And that'll just go over that. And then this piece will go over here. I went with tan because it's gonna be a lot closer to the brick color. Um, but seeing how deep this is, I will probably just put the pavers back over it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and fill this back in with some more dirt so that this will sit flat there so that we'll be able to reach in, turn the valve on and off as we isolate this for the winter time. But at this point, it's, uh, 
it stopped raining, obviously. But we can isolate this and turn the water back on and use the water in the house. Um, at the moment, I do need to go out and pick up some parts to do the um, dosing system that I want to do for this. So, probably going to end this video here. Um, probably show you what it looks like when we fill the dirt back up a little bit. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for diagnosing, troubleshooting, and repairing a, a leak that you've got. Uh, when your front yard is full of water. Uh, tune in next week and we will show you how we do this dosing system for the fertilizer um, directly plumbed into the sprinkler system. Should be pretty cool and as an added bonus you can actually put some cedar oil or something like that in there to repel mosquitoes and pests. There's a couple pest solutions you can do with that too so uh, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, uh, give us a thumbs up and click that notification bell so you that notification bell so you can be notified when that drops next week. We'll see you next time on how it's done.